Um, let's see. So I've got my speaker sitting here. We're going to gut that, see what's inside. I've got my, my parts here, woofer, tweeter, uh, terminal cup, crossover, felt. So I could see uh, what that's going to look like in the cabinet. So uh, let's get started. So here's these old fashioned grills. Um, any of you that were around in the 70s and 80s probably remember these grills. They're just like a, uh, I guess it's like a heat molded perforated plastic with like a, I don't know if it, it's kind of like a fabric that's glued to it or something. I mean, this has got to be probably the worst thing ever for uh, acoustic transparency, but it is what it is. Um, so these will probably just go on there for, for looks. But the idea being is that this felt is going to go in there and I'm going to have to keep it far enough away from the edge to where I can still get the grill in there, which luckily for us, it actually does go in there kind of loosey-goosey. Can't believe it, after all these years, these things still are holding up so well. But yeah, see there's like all kind of room in there. So I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so that's that. Now, what else? What else? What else? Okay, and I got my tweeter here. Good deal. All right, let's open this guy up and see what is inside. You know, so far too, in all my Bresto mods, I've been really lucky to be able to reuse uh, screws. So, because screws are one of those things where they're not cheap and to find ones that have like a nice finish on them is pretty tough. Usually the only time I see them is when they're on cabinets themselves. Like the other ones you buy in bulk usually have like a, just a, I don't even know, they rust. Let's put it that way. These, I've not seen these rust yet. So I prefer to reuse the old screws if possible. All right. There's the original tweeter and you know it's a tweeter because on the realistic products, they always put what kind of speaker it is. Tweeter. Uh, 10 watt max, made in Korea, 8 ohm, 2 kilohertz to 18,000 kilohertz. Wow, it's pretty amazing. Frequency response actually seems like it went over 18,000, but that's probably a usable frequency response, I would think. All right, so let's see if we can get this off of here without busting it. These are our old vintage speakers. Got to be careful. And the uh, the terminal ends, I think that these are steel terminal ends. And they're just crimped on to some very, very thin wire. Tweeters are still like brand new though. Phenolic ring tweeter. I like phenolic ring tweeters. All right. Now let's check out this woofer. And this is uh, Realistics. Um, at some point in time, I don't know if they did advertise it this way when this speaker was sold, which I think was in the late 70s. Um, but at one point they were calling these their long throw woofer. So pretty interesting stuff. And I've actually got um, this will make my second pair of these. So I don't know. I might even try kind of a DIY design instead of a resto mod. I might just try a DIY design uh, using the spare parts from some of these speakers that I take apart. All right. And there's our woofer, and you know it's a woofer. It says right there, 
Let's see, uh, eight ohm, 35 Hertz to four kilohertz, 20 watt max. Yeah, so I mean, usable response, 35 uh, to 4,000, that's pretty good. Yeah, pretty, pretty good. And these things are still in really good shape. I'm impressed. Weasel these off of here without breaking anything. It does have a little tiny red mark there where the positive went. Wow, got it. All right, cool. So difference in woofers. Let's see. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that bad boy compared to this one, huh? Wow. Will size matter? I don't know. Like to be very close to the same size. That'd be great if it fits in the hole. All right, well, let's see if the woofer fits in there, huh? Let's, here's hoping. Oh, yeah, that fits in there actually pretty good. That looks pretty serious. All right, cool. Now, the tweeter. Will the tweeter fit? Oh, so close and yet so far away. Well, it looks like, looks like I could do one of two things. The, let me kind of turn this up so you can see it better. So the tweeter will technically fit through this hole, at least the magnet and the terminals will. The thing that's in the way uh, are the, the uh, front mounting plate and waveguide. Um, it's snapped on here. Oh, that's part of it. I'm not gonna go taking it apart. But basically what I would need to do to get this in there is just notch out where these things are so i could do that the other idea i had i do have another tweeter yeah i've got another tweeter this is a also a peerless uh this is a three quarter inch tweeter and this tweeter i have tried and i did really like the sound of it um it's a tiny tiny little thing but it's it's a good sound and tweeter so well unfortunately I mean that would I could technically put it in there but I would have screw holes showing on the outside and that might be kind of ugly so I think for this design much as I hate to go you know chopping up a cabinet I'll just notch these out so that that slides in there. That's not that big of a deal. And I need to uh, open up the back anyway, regardless. All right. Well, so that's, that's that. That's really exciting stuff. Uh, I'm going to have probably next time you see me, I'm going to be putting these things together and testing them. So putting them together, listening to them, and testing them, frequency testing them. Will I get anywhere near the original frequency response? Mm. I kind of doubt it, honestly. I kind of doubt it. Um, the main thing that this will do, this resto mod, what this will do to the speaker is it will increase its power handling immensely. Because what was this thing before? Oh, uh, this one, uh, the woofer was, um, 20 watt max Ooh. and the tweeter was a 10 watt max. So that's like a 30 watt max speaker. Wow. I was driving those 
with a pretty healthy NAD receiver that puts out, uh, I think two channel, it puts out 130 some odd watts per side. So when I turned these up earlier, um, when I did the listening test, I was probably overpowering in them. <laughs> But anyway, the new ones though, yeah, the new ones are nuts. Because like these tweeters, I want to say these tweeters are something like 80 watt RMS, maybe somewhere in that range. And these woofers, I want to say are somewhere in the area of 80 to 100 watts uh, RMS per channel. You know, so that's, that's nuts. I mean, so basically I'm looking at, you know, a minimum... 100, 120 watt per channel uh, system. All right. Oh, last thing I was gonna show you on this cabinet. Now, normally I take and brace and gusset these cabinets up pretty good. This one does already have a brace in it, which is pretty cool. The volume of the box is so small that I'm not going to put more bracing in it because I don't wanna take away from the internal volume of the cabinet. But what I will do is load it up with that Silas sound deadener. And I'm also going to use some of my uh, poly, uh, one inch poly sheet uh, insulation in here, in addition to fiberglass. Okay, well, that was it. Uh, I'm gonna leave you with a bit of the cliffhanger here. And the next time that you catch this series, uh, I'll be putting this together, listening to it, testing it. Um, in the meanwhile, I've got another video that I'm working on trying to get that out to you. And that is the part two uh, of the Jensen CS315 build, which has a lot of in-depth testing and tuning on that video. So watch for that video and also watch for the second part of this video. Um, these speakers, once they're done, actually right now, they're already on my website. So, um, if you, uh, are interested in purchasing speakers instead of building them, you can pre-order them on the website. Um, if not, you can wait till they're done and they'll be on the website available in stock, ready to go. All right. Well, thanks again for joining me and I really appreciate you. Um, if you have any friends, neighbors, relatives that are audiophiles, home audio geeks, whatever, right? People with big sound systems and speakers. Uh, please share the video. Um, I really appreciate it. And like I say, if you're a subscriber, I really, really appreciate that you are a subscriber. Hope you're enjoying the content. Uh, if you are not a subscriber, I would highly encourage you to subscribe. Um, I plan on keeping this going for quite a while. And, uh, yeah, if, uh, if you like this video, you like the content, give me a thumbs up. I'll catch you next time.